up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours where there is a monumental amount of news to discuss. Firstly, Barcelona's priority for the upcoming transfer window has been confirmed. We do want a left back, a left winger, and a midfielder. We have been linked with players from all three of those options. We're going to discuss them all with Alex Garcia being the deal that is the most advanced at the moment. We talk about left backs as well and Sergi Cardona, Alex Valle, and of course at left wing, we talk about Joao Felix and maybe Mitoma being an option. But the main discussion of this video will be on contract renewals. We have updates on the renewals of Kubarsi, Hector Fort, Mark Bernal, Arujo, Frankie de Jong as well, and also potentially a big sale this summer that Barcelona are planning for. Who will it be? We'll talk about Koundé potentially being that big sale, Rafinha as well. Of course, the likes of Romeo, Alonso, Roberto will leave, but the club do need to look at a big sale. We'll give you guys an update on Victor Roque's red card appeal as well, and also a breakdown of his transfer fee as well. We finally have the actual details of his transfer fee as a total. New managers of course, Sergio Consal, Hans Lee Flick, and of course Julian Nagam is right now is our na main names being reported in the media. Our new home kit for next season has been leaked and we'll give you guys the updates around the relationship between Barcelona and Nike. And finally Deco is doing a world tour in Catalonia. He's done another interview this time with Esport3 and we'll discuss and break down what our sporting director said ahead of a huge summer transfer window for Barcelona. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. And also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 48 hours. Now we're going to be discussing what Barcelona's plan is for the upcoming summer transfer window. Going into every summer, we kind of know the idea and the structure of what Barcelona want to pursue. And now for this summer, it hasn't made clear. Sport have come out saying that Barcelona are looking to make at least three summer signings for the following position. Number one, of course, a pivot. Number two, a left winger. And number three, a left back. Again, pretty much in standard, no complaints there, but let's now get into the targets and who we have been linked with. Firstly, we'll get it over with very quickly in the left back department because it's kind of clear we've been talking about it over recent weeks with Gabriel Sanz and Deportivo coming out saying that Barcelona do not intend to extend Marcos Alonso's contract and the player himself assumes that he will not continue at Barcelona. The option of Alex Valle, currently on loan at Levante, and Sergi Cardona, Las Palmas player for free in June, are the two currently being evaluated. So again, it's going to be between these two who will provide coverage and competition for Alejandro Baldi next season. I'm honestly, I'm at a point where either option for me is good. I'm leaning a bit towards Sergio Cardona simply on the experience factor. He's still fairly young. I believe he's 23, 24 years old. Alex Valle, again, based on the you know loan reports, we haven't heard anything about him since end of October, beginning of November. Yes, he's a great talent, but it's going to be a risk. And also, that's not really going to push Alejandro Baldi next season. You know, last, this season he's had Alonso. He's like, no problem. Next season he'll have, let's say, for example, Alex Valle. He'll probably looking like, eh, I have one or two mistakes in me for Alex Valle to really push me to the bench. I think Sergio Cardona comes in as one of the best left backs in La Liga on a free transfer as well. Then maybe Barcelona can, you know, do an Estanias, Chadriad kind of operation with Alex Valle to sell him on loan with the buyback option, future sell-on clause, and all that stuff added on as well. But to be honest, I'm at a point right now where either option is okay but i am leaning towards sergio cardona for the moment now in regards to the midfield of course we haven't been linked with any pivots i mean what's new the sky is blue the grass is green we've been linked with one player in the sense that we could have got him but we end up not getting him and that is of course calvin phillips with sports reporting that barcelona were interested in signing calvin phillips on loan we rolled him out due to ffp problems ball to pick up an injury barcelona then tried to sign phillips as they could register him due to ball this injury but it was too late as west ham took the lead in signing him so we were initially interested in phillips when ball got his injury we tried to get the phillips deal over the line but in the end he's already way too close to joining west ham He's played twice for West Ham, cost him about four goals, so we might have done a bullet there. What remains to be seen. Again, I would have taken Phillips, especially with the numbers that we currently have in the midfield. But let's now discuss midfield targets, not in the pivot for the summer. One of the key signs for Barcelona could be very early on in the window. And again, we have been talking about him a lot since the January transfer window, and that is Alex Garcia. Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona have decided to sign. Alex Garcia, the club have informed both Girona and the players entourage that they're very serious about signing him and Barcelona believe that he will cost around 14 to 15 million euros and players could be included in the deal. 
This is an absolute no-brainer for Barcelona. You are signing one of the best midfielders in La Liga in a position where we do need depth. Again, Pedri. Injury prone beyond belief. Gundogan is going to be getting leggy next season. Gavi coming back from ACL. You, you never know. He could come back the same Gavi or a better Gavi. Could come back an absolute worse Gavi. You don't know. You don't want to take that risk. And you also want Gavi to recover, uh, you know, at a good pace. You don't want to rush him back once the season comes about. Like, oh, we're still low on numbers in the midfield. Alex Garcia, brilliant, brilliant signing. And for the price as well. And it could even get cheaper than that. Because Fernando Polo Deportivo also came out saying that Pablo Torre, Eric Garcia and Oyo Romeo could make the possible deal to sign Alex Garcia cheaper because Girona are more than interested in extending the stay of the two uh, Barcelona low knees and are also already wanting Romeo back in January. Again, a few transfer videos ago, I talked about the sporting director of Girona saying that he would take back Oyo Romeo in a heartbeat. My old, The thing is what... I still see players in both Pablo Torre and Eric Garcia. I think with Eric Garcia, the ship has kind of sailed at that point. You already have... Inigo, you have Christensen, you have Kunde, you have Arujo, and now you have Pau Kubrasi as well. So Eric Garcia coming in, I think he's got no chance, let's be honest. I think he's still a very, very good player. He's done very well at Girona this season. Of course, you have Longlet coming back from, from loan as well. You got to factor that in, unfortunately. I think Eric Garcia is still a top player, and I really backed him, especially when he signed for Man City. I think last season with Kunde coming in and Christensen really doing well from the get-go, he really didn't have a moment. I still think he's a good player. And same thing with Pablo Torre as well. Keep in mind, we are battling with Real Madrid to sign him. We spent some good money on him as well. People are wondering why can't Pablo Torre kind of be that Alex Garcia, you know, profile. To be honest, I wouldn't mind that. I think we're at a point now where... You gotta pick between Pablo Torre or Alex Garcia to be that kind of extra midfielder to provide coverage and competition for both Pedri and Gabi and even Gundogan as well. Because look at this season, once one of them gets injured, you're scrounging around for scraps at that point. But I think Alex Garcia would be a brilliant signing. And for me, it comes down now to the decision of Barcelona. I think if you're signing Alex Garcia, might as well put Pablo Torre in that operation because he'll have no chance uh, in the midfield with Alex Garcia, Pedri, Gavi, Dion, Gundogan. And if we get a pivot as well, even with one or two injuries, Pablo Torre still will get little to no minutes. Of course, Romeo, just chuck him in there. <laughs> just, just, just throw him in there. Honestly, if you offer all... On paper, it looks dumb offering three decent players for one, but if we really don't want to spend any money on this operation, I honestly wouldn't mind. Again, Eric Garcia for free. Romeo, you spent about three or four million on him. Pablo Dori, we did spend a hefty amount on. I think it was, what, 10 million or 5 million fixed plus uh, variables. So if you told me offer all three for Alex Garcia, I wouldn't mind it. But again, the main decision for me is picking on who to trust for the, you know, medium and long term. Alex Garcia, 26, 27 years old. Or Paolo Torre, the young young midfielder who has a lot of potential and, you know, things of that nature. So we'll wait and see how things turn out in that sense. But again, keep your eyes on Alex Garcia where Barcelona are pushing heavily to sign him this summer. And again, players can be included in the operation to make it cheaper to the point where you only have to include any money in it whatsoever. Now, we've talked about the midfielder, left back. Let's now discuss, finally, the left winger reinforcement. Now, according to Sport, Barcelona want to sign a pure left winger in the summer. Different profile to Joao Felix, who feels more comfortable playing more centrally. Again, the future of Joao Felix still remains in doubt, in my opinion. I'm very worried that Deco might spend money on him. And if we do, madre mia, Deco's going to get absolute pelters from Kules and from the media. Spending money on Joao Felix is... A recipe for disaster. He's done absolutely nothing to justify it whatsoever. Yes, he's been all right. He's had a few good spells, but like I told you guys back in the summer, I'll say it again. He does not quite fit the system of Barcelona, especially as a left winger. I think it depends on who the new manager comes in. Even Xavi, when he had that left forward with Fran Torres and Joao Felix, I think he worked in that sense. But if you want to have natural wingers, I think Joao Felix is definitely not the correct option. But again, we'll wait and see what happens with Joao Felix's future. Again, uh, Sport did say that Barcelona are planning to keep both Joao Felix and Joao Cancelo. How to keep Felix for me is a question mark. Will they bring in? A, will they do another loan operation, 40 million buy option next summer, 2025, or would they spend hard cash on him this summer? That for me is the big question. But we have been linked with one left winger, not really strong links, but general interest you could say, and that is Mitoma of Brighton with Frank Corazon Sport coming out saying that Barcelona like and are monitoring Brighton's Mitoma situation at Brighton, and Ansu Fati could be included in the process now i don't know if this is a hot take or not but to be honest at left wing next season at barcelona i'd rather have Ansu Fati than motoma with again for me 
you have to consider the adaptation period, the, you know, coming into a new country, new culture, new style of play, new atmosphere. You need a year or two to adjust, especially at a level at Matoma when you're kind of in your mid-20s coming into your prime. Not like a Lewandowski when you're a big name player, you come straight in and it's a bit easier. With Ansu, no, he's basically friends with everyone. He's grown up in the academy with everyone. And I still think there's a player there in Ansu Fati. I'm hoping he has a big season from now until the end uh, of the season. I think he can definitely be the left winger that Barcelona need. Honestly, I think if he does well, we all have the potential of Ansu Fati. He just needs to stay fit. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. I think Ansu Fati's name is still in, in the question in regards to left winger. I think, again, the left winger, left winger market is quite low. I think there's rumors about Rafael Leao being available this summer with PSG trying to go for him if they uh, if Mbappe goes to PSG. Apart from that, I think we've been living with Karsh Velia as well, the Napoli winger. I'm not a big fan of him as well. Uh, I think he's a good player. I mean, for Barcelona, I don't think he's quite the profile that we are looking for. But a winger that we were, uh, you know, monitoring for quite a few months now, but now has made a move uh, to Manchester City, and that is Savio. If you don't know, Here's the, uh, I'm letting you know right now, he is going to be joining Man City this summer. The deal is already confirmed. Of course, Man City own part of Girona, so it'll be probably the easiest operation they ever execute in their life. But Joaquin Pereira from Sport, of course, very reliable in regards to Brazilian players in Barcelona. He came out saying that Savio's primary choice was to join Barcelona this summer, but the Catalans didn't know how much FFP margin there will be in the summer, and there was uncertainty whether he, they could face his signing. Messi then accelerated the agreement so that Barcelona couldn't intervene anymore, and if it turns out that there was room to sign him after all. So if Savio just waited until the summer, there could have maybe been a possibility, but since he didn't want to wait, and City were making really good progress with the Gerona, since, you know, they fucking own Gerona, it was an easy, easy operation. Now, City are set with wingers. They got Doku and Savio, Echeverri. They're pretty much set, so that's one less club competition for the winger department which Barcelona do need to invest in a little bit so we'll wait and see how things turn down the left wing department I think the left winger a pivot are the two big question marks on who Barcelona will actually pursue the right profile the price I think a left back is pretty quite clear it's gonna be either Alex uh, Valle or Sergio Cardona which should be honest I'm fine with either option in my opinion so we'll wait and see how things turn out but again the summer transfer plan is clear is now down to you know identifying those targets and then executing the operations Let's now discuss the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 48 hours. If Barcelona want to sign a pivot, a left winger, and a left back in the summer, maybe a few other players as well, players are going to have to leave the club. Now, Raccoon have come out saying that selling a top player like Arujo for $100 million would not solve Barcelona's problem with financial fair play. To return to the 1-1 rule, the club needs to cover the pending lever and make two or three exits, bringing the Joao's is an objective for Barcelona. So sales are needed. I think the pending economic lever payments from Liberal Football Finance will cover a lot of us returning to the 1-1 rule. Again, the goal for Barcelona at this point is to come into June the 30th being in the 1-1 rule. Of course, if you sell someone now, you only get to put a third of the transfer fee because we're currently in the 1-3 rule, a third of the transfer fee counting for financial fair play. So the club really want to return to the 1-1 rule as soon as possible. We'll see how the pending economic levers will help with that. But again, sales will be happening. Ferran Corras came out saying a minimum of five players could leave the club this summer. Among them could be Roberto, Alonso, Romeu, Christensen, and Rafinha could depart as well. I think we can pretty much confirm in regards to the first team at this point, Roberto, Alonso, Romeu, you are all gone the question is will anyone else making that exit now we've talked about Rafinha again his De Deco is his former agent so he does have that benefit to him but we are I think ladies and gentlemen looking at a center back sale I think one of Arujo Christensen or Kunde will depart the club this summer and there have been reports about Jules Kunde as well Ferran Martinez from Mundo Portivo is reporting that Barcelona suspect that Kunde could listen to offers during the summer they don't rule out that the Frenchman wants to look for a path to a club where he will play as a central defender now this <sighs> this talk about center back and right back for Kunde is starting to piss me off because now we've had about a year and a half of this bullshit Kunde is playing at right back because we have problems at right back. Cancelo's been injured. Roberto sucks. Again, remember, Roberto's had the single worst performance this season. Away, Villarreal, third or second game of the season. Worst cameo of the season at right back. Kunde needs to, I think, 
switch on his head a little bit. First of all, I don't even think he plays as natural right back. I think over the past two months, he's been very much playing as a defensive right back, kind of like a right center back in a back three with either Alejandro Baldi or Joao Cancelo making those darting runs down the left. I think he has been playing in a bit of advanced right back role, especially in December, a uh, bit into January. But since mid-January, since the Betis game until now, he's been very much a defensive fullback. And you have to remember that this man started the World Cup final, you know, a year ago at right back. I get it if you're like... I want to play at center back, but if you're playing right back for France and right back for Barcelona, knock, 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 there's probably, you know, a little bit of a message for you. Listen, Koundé's best moment this season was playing at center back from September, from August until, what was it, end, end of October or beginning of October? That was Koundé class. That was his best moment, and I think as a center back, Koundé is absolutely brilliant, and I see him and Arujo still as our concrete center back partnership for years to come. Out of the center backs, I think the likely sale for me would be Christensen because, again, he came in for free. So that is straight profit for financial fair play. And again, I think Kunde and Aruho are better defenders. I think on the ball, Christensen is probably the best out of the three. But I think as defenders, I think Kunde and Aruho are better. And with Mbappe joining Real Madrid uh, probably this summer, you need the best defense you can get. So we'll wait and see on who Barcelona sell. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. I think, again, place your bets on one of those three center backs. Aruho, Kunde, Christian. I think one of them will leave, especially with Kubarsi uh, coming in. Maybe even Eric Garcia might stay. Uh, you have Inigo still. Inigo, I think, maybe could leave if we get an offer for him. I highly doubt anyone's going to offer for him, and he does, he's going to be going to next season with one year left in his deal. I think he's been all right this season. So we'll wait and see how things turn out. I don't think it'll be Rafinha because of the Deco links, and I think it's going to be I sent it back. So we'll see how things turn out. I am expecting Barcelona to make at least one sale above 50 million euros. The question now is, who will it be? Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team and the B team at Barcelona. Finally, we're now into February the 9th and we're getting some proper contract renewal updates. Of course, Deco's plan was to begin negotiations and talks and initial contacts for renewals into the new year. We're now a month and a bit in the new year. We're finally getting some reports about renewals. And again, it has to do a lot with the center back department. Now, firstly, on Arujo, Fernando Polo from Deportivo is coming out saying that Barcelona have absolutely no intentions on selling Arujo. The club is firm on renewing his deal, which expires in 2026, and have already arranged a meeting with the player's agent to discuss about a contract extension soon. Barcelona have received information that Bayern Munich are willing to offer Arujo a salary of 12 million euros and pay up to 80 million euros as a transfer fee for the Uruguayan. But Barcelona are not considering selling Arujo as the one health financially due to not being in the 1-1 one -one rule again if we sell him for 80 we can only put quick maths here like 20 million into ffp so that's not help us whatsoever and the club considers aduho as the best center back at the club aduho will be the last option defender to be sold and will only be sold if the player himself asks to leave rejects a renewal or an irrefutable offer arrives all scenarios barcelona expect will not happen <sighs> what have i been saying since Tuchel called Aruho, I've been saying I think Aruho has gone this summer and I still stand by that for the first point there that Fernando Polo mentions. If the player asks to leave and I think he will. I hope he doesn't. I think Aruho, top defender and with again Mbappe coming to Madrid, bloody hell are we going to need him? I think that he will ask to leave. That's just my opinion based on what I've seen, my sources and yes I have sources, don't my sources to Aruho are quite decent. My Uruguayan links are there. That's just my opinion. That's not factual. I think he will leave just based on what I've seen and what I've heard. I think Aruho might ask to leave Barcelona this summer with the money that Bayern Munich are offering him. New project and all this stuff. But again, the club don't want to sell him. He is a third captain. Probably going to be, he's going to be second captain going into next season. So... We'll wait and see on that. Now, in regards to Aruho, more continuation on that point. Fran Martinez from Deportivo coming out saying that Barcelona see Aruho and Pau Cubrasi are the center backs pairing for the future. They believe that the duo could start leading Barcelona's defense in less than two years and it could continue for many seasons. They would combine character, speed, aggressiveness with touch, vision, elegance, and ball playing. In addition, Aruho could also transmit his experience and leadership to Cubrasi. This is just flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. What did Chavi say in the uh, documentary two years ago? Aruho and Kunde, that's the center back pairing for years to come. Then Christensen made it to the team. Oh, Christensen and Aruho. Oh, then Kubarsi. Aruho. It's all a little crap for me. 
I think that Kubarsi has done enough for Barcelona to look at selling Christensen because we all know that, like I just mentioned in the Kunde uh, sales section, that Christensen is the best ball playing defender at Barcelona. But I think Kubarsi does have the potential to definitely overtake him. And you can take that risk, sell Christensen, promote Kubarsi into his spot. And those are your four defenders for next season. Kunde, Arujo, Kubarsi, Indigo, Martinez. I think that's perfectly fine. Kubarsi has been in the team for a month and a half. And we're now going to just throw everything tits up, sell everyone, and just push Kubarsi to living hell. Yes, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant talent. The things I've seen him do on the ball, I haven't seen a defender do at Barcelona in a very, very long time. But come the fuck on. We're, we're talking about a month and a half of gameplay here. He played, you know, half an hour, uh, 45 minutes against Unionistas. Uh, started against Betis, played an hour. Uh, played against Alaves. Like, bloody hell, tranquilo, tranquilo. Like, we're acting like we've gotten the next best thing since sliced bread here. I mean, the rush to conclusion of Barcelona is ridiculous. Of course, uh, Kubarsi, I'd keep him, uh, give him a chance in the first team next season. Of course, of course. But I'm not going to say that Kubarsi and Aruha are going to be the center back partner for this future. I personally don't think that for this moment. You're, you know, the kid's buddy, 16, who is he, 17, 18 years old? Relax. Again, this is just Barcelona making noise. You know, this is what the media does. One reason why Chavi left, because one minute it's Kunde Arujo, next minute it's Christian and Kunde. Remember, they had a moment, I think, last season as well when Arujo got injured, and now all of a sudden it's Arujo Kubarsi. The center back department is something you have to keep out for this summer. It is going to be crazy. Of course, you have the current players now. You have Eric Garcia coming back from loan, Clement Longley as well. It's going to be an absolute fiasco. But I think if we're all happy, all ideal, if we need to sell someone, sell Christensen, promote Kubarsi in this spot, and have Inigo, Kubarsi, Kunde, Arujo as your four center backs. If you really want to keep Eric Garcia, maybe if he's not involved in the Alex Garcia deal, and of course Longlet, get him as far away from this club as possible. But again, the club overall do want to keep Arujo and are in talks to renew his contract starting next week when they have a meeting scheduled with his agent. So we we'll see how that turns out. Now, staying with Kobarsi and the La Masia theme, they're not the only uh, renewals. The club are not only folks on the first team, but also on the reserve team as well. Candid Serif have come out saying that Barcelona are working to shield their youth. Hector Ford, Paul Kobarsi, and Mark Bernal are the three players who are close to signing the renewals with Barcelona. All parties assure that the process of Hector Ford's renewal will be same as Koshin, so his renewal is about to be closed. Now, Hector Ford is 17. He cannot sign a professional contract till he's 18. His 18th birthday is in August. So the plan for Barcelona is for him to agree a pre-contract like Koshin did. Koshin signed a pre-contract agreement, and then he'll sign it officially when he turns 18, I believe, in the middle of March, end of March, somewhere around there. Hector Ford will be the same. And the reason why Hector Ford's renewal is very, very advanced, because his bloody agent is Jorge Mendes. Blah! <laughs> I tell you what, man, Jorge Mendes, might as well just call him the CEO of Barcelona as well, bloody hell. We'll talk about Jorge Mendes later on in Deco's interview, but again, he's just, not only are Barcelona raking up the talents, but also Jorge Mendes is raking up the clients. But again, with Kubarsi, Bernal, and Hector Ford, all the renewals are advanced and the club do want to keep them for the present and the future of this club. Now, finally, on Paul Kubarsi, Samuel Mars and Amoyes and from ESPN have come out saying that Barcelona were already negotiating a new contract with Paul Kubarsi's entourage, but after his recent performances, the club has changed the starting point when it comes to reaching an agreement over a new deal. He signed a professional contract when he turned 16 last year, but his emergence in the first team has accelerated the need to tie him down to a new contract. Kubarsi's release clause currently sits at 10 million million euros and a handful of Premier League clubs are targeting him. I'm not worried about this because Paul Kubrasi last summer rejected Manchester City, you know, Pep Guardiola and Seda Barcelona and signed his first professional contract with the club. So from that point when he was just a young gem to now being in the first team, I have absolutely no worries in the slightest of Kubarsi's renewal. I think it will be done. All this interest from Premier League because we're hearing that Manchester United are ready to activate his 10 million euro uh, release clause, but again, may not get linked to anyone and everyone under the side. I think all these three players in regards to Kubarsi, Hector Bernal and Hector Fort, Hector, uh, Hector Bernal, Mark Bernal, Hector Fort, I think they will all renew their contracts, hopefully before preseason. That's going to be the main goal, of course. And then after that, we will continue on with our lives. So wait and see how things turn out. I think again, with the B team players or La Masia products, their renewals will not be an issue. It really it comes down to the first team, the likes of uh, Aruha. We haven't heard any reports yet about Pedri's renewal, Gabby's renewal as well, Frankie Dion. There have been some reports here and there from Sport about Frankie, but nothing really concrete as much as Aruha. But again, renewals are important for Barcelona, and Deco needs to begin negotiation initial contacts as soon as possible. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 48 hours. Firstly, in regards to Victor Roque's red card appeal. 
which has been rejected. Go look at my last video. I explained it perfectly. I knew it was going to be rejected and it has been now officially rejected by the competition committee and he will be suspended for the match this Sunday against Granada, which means that Lewandowski will probably start and hopefully Mark Guayu is back uh, recovered from his little bit of a knock that he received a few days ago. In the statement for Victor Roque, the committee to say the committee considers that the images provided by Barcelona fail to demonstrate the existence of manifested man uh, material error, the existing of contact being evidence so again according to the committee the evidence that barcelona provided weren't good enough to really overturn the decision but you know what it's because we're barcelona i mean if if real madrid can get nachos double foot studs up leg breaking against uh tackle against port to overturn then the game is gone it was never gonna get overturned if you thought there was actually a chance you were absolutely crazy but he's suspended for uh Granada and hopefully you know that's the end of it in that sense now quickly on victor Roque, i do want to discuss some uh, weird news has come out at this moment but it has come out now and that's in regards to his transfer fee as we all know he signed for 30 million fixed 30 million, uh, 31 million euros in variables we had no idea how the variables were breaking down uh, all we heard that the club were like oh if we pay these variables we'll happily pay it it'll mean success for barcelona and the player but now we do know the variables roger Tonero has gotten the report from mundo portivo saying that breakdown victor roque's transfer fee of 30 million euros fixed and 31 million euros in variables and 20 percent capital gain in case of a future sale of the 30 million euros in fix, Barcelona will pay 5 million euros in every six months until the completion. For now, they've only paid 5 million euros. So every six months, very much every transfer window, we will pay 5 million euros to his club until we pay the 30 million. So we're looking at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. We're looking at about six transfer windows. We've already done one. This summer will be two, so on and so forth. So that's your installments pretty decent instead of you know being five every year it's five every transfer window every you know six months no problem with that of the 31 million euros in variables Barcelona will pay 5 million euros until he turns 25 again Victor Roque is 18 so from now until he turns 25 we'll be paying slowly but surely 5 million euros as a total so probably each month you could say 5.3 something like that get paid for victor roque and if he plays more than 50 percent of the matches each season as well this is up to uh 25 million euros and then five million will be paid if he finishes top three of the ballon d'or of the fifa best and one million will be paid if he actually wins the ballon d'or before 2031 so of the 31 million euros in variables 25 it basically is just matches played and being involved with barcelona then another six is, is, is involved with you know being the fifa best and winning the ballon d'or things of that nature so though Barcelona kind of overhyped these variables quite a bit. I thought it'd be like 10 million for winning La Liga or like 10 million for winning the Champions League, but it's merely broken down to games played and how much he's involved with Barcelona. And of course, if we ever sell Victor Roque in the future, 20%, they will get also 20% of any uh, capital gain. So if we sell him more, uh, we sell him for more than 30 million euros, the profit of that, they will get 20% of it. So overall, the breakdown is not really too abnormal, but. The club definitely overhyped it and said, oh, 31 million euros in variables. We, if we paid those variables, uh, we're absolutely fine with it. Out of the 31, 25, they would probably be easily played. As long as he just fit and he plays, we're going to pay at least 25 million of that. So, Victor Roque, I would say, all in all, will cost us 50 million euros come maybe like, what, 2029-ish? When we get to that point, it'll probably cost us a total of 50 million euros. And that's how I'm going to judge it unless he wins the Ballon d'Or in the future. We'll wait and see on that. But that's a breakdown of his transfer fee. So, that's, you know, some insight there. And, of course, Red Card Appeal was rejected. He will be suspended for this weekend's match against Granada. Now, this is the part of the video where we talk about all the crazy news in regards to the managers being linked with Barcelona. This will be a very common theme from, from now until the new manager is appointed. We're going to talk about all the links because it'll happen every single day until the manager is appointed. Even though Deco and Laporta both have come out in the media multiple times saying they have not begun their search for a new manager. We're still being linked week in, week out. Now, firstly, Javi Mingel, you know, OnlyFans Javi Mingel, he is moving very very mad he's come out saying that the two main favorites for the barcelona job right now to replace chavi is sergio cohen sao and hansi flick there's a disagreement between laporta and deco in that regard laporta wants flick but deco prefers cohen sao this i believe is just straight laziness from having miguel again keep in mind apart from injury news having miguel has not been you know the best of reporters especially before Chavi came in. He does definitely have links to Chavi. You know, he's been probably spot on since Chavi's come in regards to players being linked. You know, the Aubameyang news in the January, us wanting Morata initially, he got that all spot on. But I think the post Chavi era, he will be getting exposed and his links won't be, and his you know, sources won't be as concrete. 
But bloody hell, this is just, this for me seems lazy because I can do this. Hansi Flick, German school, uh, Coenzao, Porto, uh, Portugal, Jorge Mendes, Deco, the links are there. Sergio Coenzao should not be considered in any capacity whatsoever. I mean, I, having even got to the three reasons why he's an option is that he's, he's friends with Deco and his agent Jorge Mendes. Is that all it fucking takes to become the Barcelona manager? Shit, I might as well just become friends with Jorge Mendes. I'll be involved and be in link with Barcelona all the time. I mean, bloody hell. He also came out saying that Joan Laporta plans to contact Jurgen Klopp about the Barcelona job in the coming weeks, see if he's actually interested. In that regard, it has been shut down by Catalonia Radio, saying that Jurgen Klopp will not become Barcelona's coach next season. Sources close to the entourage have confirmed that he wants to rest, and Laporta's attempts will not change his mind. So, he wants to that's a sabbatical, fair enough to him, and that's what, that was always going to be the plan, so I'm not surprised in any capacity whatsoever. But again, the German school, getting a German manager, is picking up a lot of pace on Hansi Flick from Mr. Manos come out saying that Hansi Flick would love to work with Barcelona. I mean, no shit, Sherlock. I'm not surprised by that whatsoever. Apparently, Hansi Flick is learning some Spanish. He's taking Spanish classes just in case he becomes the Barcelona manager. I mean, he needs to speak some decent Spanish for him to become the manager. Fair play to Lewandowski. Lewandowski has been here for what? A year and a half? And his Spanish is pretty decent. He did an interview with Sport, I think, yesterday uh, speaking Spanish, and it was top tier. Credit to Lewandowski for that. Now, I think everyone's dream manager, I think if we could all agree on one manager to come in that's, you know, the most realistic and, he, you know, it's part of that German school as well, is Julian Nagelsmann. Now, he was asked about potentially taking the Barcelona job uh, in the summer and he said that I haven't thought about that yet and since my contract ends after the Euros, I would say as things stand now, it's very unlikely for me to continue with Germany and Nagelsmann's contract is only bad until the end of the Euros. It is a difficult one for Barcelona because the Euros ends July 14th and Barcelona's preseason begins July 14th. Let's be honest, can Germany make it to the Euros final? Yes, will they? Probably not. But I, I would suspect Germany to at least make it around 16 quarterfinals. So they're going to be, you know, deep into the Euros competition. I think Nagelsmann is the best coach available that's realistic to come into Barcelona. I think him, Luis Enrique, if he somehow gets sacked by PSG, would be my two main options to come in. But now those men, it's difficult because you can, you know, pre-agree from the join after the uh, Euros, that's fine. But then the media start coming all over you. He's going to be asking the Euros week in, week out. You think about Barcelona, you think about the Euros. Of course, you know, signing him before the Euros is beneficial because you can talk to him about what he wants to do with Barcelona, what players he wants in the transfer window. You can start working on that. But then the actual coming in and coaching Barcelona, he's going to go through an intense tournament for a month and a month, uh, for a month or so, maybe a month and a few weeks, because he had to go in training camp, friendly games, then the Euros. He's going to have to immediately, once Germany get knocked out, or if they win it, immediately straight to Barcelona for preseason. No rest whatsoever. It is a very, very unlikely scenario. I think the only way Nagelsmann can join Barcelona is if he pulls a Ronald Coleman and just backs out of the Germany job completely and joins Barcelona now and just absolutely Fs over Germany in terms of the Euros, which I don't think he'll do. I think he's a very professional man, very integral as well. So I think that's the least of the possibilities. So we'll wait and see, man. I'm very, very intrigued to see who we appoint. I think right now there's no one as a clear favorite. I think we can all agree that Nagelsmann is the best coach that's available that's realistic to come in. But with him, you know, at least coaching until the Euros, it's going to be very, very interesting to see. Like I've always mentioned, I'll say it again, I think by June the 1st, we have to know who the manager is, come in, transfer targets, and prepare for preseason. And Nagelsmann can't be there. And that's the only reason why I think he will not become the manager. So we'll see, we'll see how things turn out in that sense. But again, the search for the new manager definitely continues and it will take quite a few months. Let's now take a look at the news in regards to Barcelona and Nike. It has gotten quite intense and over the past, I would say, few days, we have reached a conclusion and it looks like Barcelona will stick with Nike at least for next season and whether or not we continue after that remains to be seen. Now, Cam the have come out saying that one of the major conflicts between Barcelona and Nike is the sale of of replica shirts. A Catalan company sells the replica shirts of Barcelona in kiosks and unofficial stores in Barcelona, the rest of Spain, and in Portugal as well. This is done with Nike's consent, and Nike also receive a percent of the income, while Barcelona don't get squat. In the document signed in 2018, right, who was the president in 2018? You know who it was. Nike blocked several products on which Barcelona can get a percent of the income, and Nike considers this replica as part of such clothing. Because of this conflict, Barcelona filed a lawsuit against Nike, which was then temporarily suspended while Juan Laporta resonated new constructual conditions with Nike. So, initially, the other twat, whose name will not be named, 
signed the deal with Nike saying that you can not only not negotiate with anyone else while you're with us, but also all other merchandising in regards to outside the club will be straight profit for Nike and you don't get a cut of it whatsoever. And this is what Barcelona really hate. Not only is the actual contract undervalued beyond belief, but there's money that can compensate for that undervaluation that Nike don't want to give up and that Barcelona, the old, the old, the old president, the, the fucking moron, signed for us to not get anything from it. And due to the documents of intent between Barcelona and Nike in 2018, Barcelona are prohibited to negotiate with any other brand which are all specific in that document during the duration of the contract with Nike. So on contract, we are not allowed to negotiate with Puma, New Balance, fucking Reebok, Geoff, whatever it may be. We're not allowed to negotiate, even though we have been. I think it's because the relationship has been so bad, the club is just looking at different options. Hell, they could be just straight capping in the media. But this is why. And it comes, people have to, you have to realize, lads, that we are still suffering from what this motherfucker did to us in his presidential campaign. I'm not talking about Laporte, I'm talking about Barto Cunt. We are still suffering. FFP, Nike deals not being, uh, we can't even negotiate. We can't, we're basically locked into the death until 2027. We are still paying for this man's crimes. Joan Laporta is doing an unbelievable job with about 20 hands tied behind his back. And he's still making this club at a consistent relevancy. And again, we're still having that ink come in. Again, the, the easiest way has always been to continue the relationship with Nike. I think Laporta does want to stay with Nike as well. has been quite clear about, of that in the media. He's only been talking to Puma because Nike are undervaluing us beyond belief. And Puma ready to offer us double the money for a new contract. The fact that, you know, Real Madrid get 200 million from Adidas and Bayern Munich get like I think, 180 million euros from Adidas and we only get 100 million euros as one of Nike's best sellers and their best club that they have on the payroll is absolutely wild in my opinion. But that situation that we're in, we'll wait and see if Barcelona and Nike can negotiate something to, you know, help both sides in terms of compensations financially. But we're going to be taking on with Nike into the next season because next season's home kit has been officially leaked and confirmed. Look how sexy that looks. This is top three best Nike kits they have produced. The only quirm and the only downside I do have about this is the badge being in the middle. I understand why they've done it. I think it is a you know, different look. I don't mind it, but I think if the badge was just in this natural spot, you know, right here. Woo! I love the, you know, split. It's going to be uh, the gold trim as well on the Nike and Spotify logo. You're going to have the 50-50 Balagrana colors and then the opposite on the sleeve. I think it's going to be a very, very clean kit. Of course, the second kit is going to be black as well with the purple trim. Next season's kids are going to be fire. Of course, the best kids we've had, I would say, over the past 10 years was the 2020-2021 season. The first season under Komen. We had the home kit, which was beautiful. Then the second kit was black and uh, gold as well. Third kit was purple, it was just mid, as all third kit usually are. But this kit, we better win some trophies in this kit. Because I'll tell you what, I need to see it in person. Once I see the production, the official announcement, and you know, actual pictures of it, this is just all just edits based on you know information being given. You gotta see the real deal. But I'll tell you what, this kit has massive, massive potential. Based on just the leaked images alone, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Could rise to 9, 9.5, maybe even 10 once I see it in person. But the new kit for next season, the home kit, this is how it'll look officially confirmed and leaked and everything. This will be the design 100%, not just down to waiting for official confirmation. And with the kit being, late, uh, being leaked at this point, that doesn't mean that we will continue with Nike into next season. So wait and see how things turn out in that regard. But the home kit next season, at least the kits next season will be good, but wait and see how Barcelona try and heal the relationship with Nike. Now the final topic that I wanted to discuss before I end off this video is in regards to yet another Deco interview. This man is doing a world tour, talking to all the media outlets in Catalonia. He talked to La Vanguardia a few days ago and then he spoke to eSport3 on Wednesday evening. Uh, going into Thursday, of course, time difference and all that jazz. Nonetheless, he has given us some new insight, new updates. And of course, when the, your sporting director speaks, you have to cover it. So let's get and see what Deco had to say. In this interview, first he's asked on Victor Roque Sanchez, of course, being rejected, saying that there are things that are difficult to understand and scare me, but we have to continue. We have already said what we had to say. Best way to put it. On Chavi's departure, it has been a surprise for everyone. At the end of the season, we considered renewing Chavi. Chavi did not want a, a long contract, but if it did not uh, win, it would be, have weighed heavily on him. We respect his decision. We do not consider the project without Chavi. So the f These motherfuckers are about to renew Chavi's contract at the end of the season based on how things are going. That is wild beyond belief. Now, Deco also says on the criticism of Chavi that uh, the work of rebuilding the team is not value. Chavi's work for the club, I would give him a 10 because there are current league champions. It seems, that, uh, it seems that Madrid has already won the league. The ties are decided at the end of the season and there's still a lot left. So Deco raised Chavi's time at Barcelona an absolute 10 out of 10. 
fair enough to him on you know signing a new coach i have not talked to anyone any coach yet because we are still uh you know assessing chavi's goodbye or still trying to you know comprehend that chavi's leaving the club we talked a lot with the president and the decision will be a joint one so remember in the raccoon interview laporta did about four days ago he said that deco will choose the new manager and now deco saying that laporta and i will both together decide the new head coach so we'll wait and see now on that on the german school appointing a german manager before talking to anyone we have to define what we want the season is not over yet there are many things to complete still first and there is still a lot of time he's absolutely spot on with that on the profile of the coach what we're looking for is a profile like the one that we have now that adapts and has young people that we must promote and that if we're not able to sign next season to optimize our resources it has to be a coach who knows how barcelona is has the club supported Xavi throughout his whole entire tenure? He said that beyond the opinions that we believe in Xavi's work, we had a very important injuries and we are achieving objectives such as being in the Champions League round 16. Maybe we have only failed against Villarreal. So he's saying the only bad game was against Villarreal, but I don't know what he was watching. He then was asked about his relationship with Xavi, saying that we constantly debate ideas with Xavi and his staff as football people and former teammates. We talk, of course, about football. And then he was asked what style of football does he want at Barcelona. He said that Barcelona has always been a little bit of everything. History has been made with players from La Masia, with high-level players, and with young people who come from the academy. Then he was asked on Busquets' absence. He said that it's a very specific profile. There isn't one on the market. And those who do not who do have them, they won't leave their clubs. City won't let Rodri leave, and Bayern Munich won't let Kimmich leave. We've opted for Gundogan, which is a different profile but has experience he also mentioned how boost gets the greatest pivot he's ever seen in his lifetime as well there is no way that our sporting director has just basically announced that Kimmich is the second best pivot in the world if Deco thinks that Kimmich is a Barcelona pivot we might be fucked <laughs> I mean genuinely of course Rodri I mean that's just playing in black and white but man had to put in Kimmich's name Oh my god. We might sign Kimmich this summer. I'm actually scared. Kimmich is not a pivot. He is a double pivot. He's a very much a Bruno Gimoraish profile of Newcastle. He's a player that needs someone to do the defensive work for him, but he can't come back and do the defensive work, but he's more so, I would say, number eight than he is a natural number six. <sighs> Hopefully, I mean, well, what can you do? He's an ass on selling important uh, players that I would like to have to improve the squad and not make it worse. I think selling Ado and De Jong to bring in Mbappe would not make would make our squad uh, worse. Fair enough. I personally as well would not sell Aruho and De Jong to bring in Mbappe. Deco has been very consistent with the fact that he does not want to sell any players in the first team and that he wants to be the first team stronger. But again, he's always had the door open that we have to sell. We'll wait and see how things turn out in that sense. He's then asked Allah Menyamal saying that we've already made an effort with him. He debuted without having a contract and in the summer we've made an effort to have him for many more years. There already is now three more years on his current contract and when he turns 18, he will extend automatically again we already knew this back in the summer they signed a contract from 16 of course till 18 and also they went at 18 to go for three more years so essentially he's renewed his contract for about five or years five or six years he's then asked on Rafinha saying I'd never offered Rafinha to Barcelona the one who asked me about Rafinha was Jordi Cruyff so maybe there's a little bit of a non-biased there we could understand Rafinha this summer who knows then as on Jorge Mendes saying that he was my agent but I don't think Barcelona treats him better than other representatives he helps us bring in two players at zero cost we would like all the agents to help us like that so I guess he's basically saying that look it's Jorge Mendes has the players that we want and he's the one making it easy for us I mean it all makes everyone happy, I guess. Then asked on Rafa Marquez, essentially being the uh, uh, candidate to become the new coach, saying that he's doing his job and he's growing as a coach. The reserve team is a great experience. We have, we have, uh, we hope he continues for many more years. We want, we want quality coaches for an emergency. We don't think about him. So basically saying that if Xavi is leaving at any point during the middle of the season, Rafa Marquez will be the one coming in. Then as on Alex Garcia joining Barcelona this summer, say that Xavi said publicly that he likes him. We have not uh, been able to replace Gabby's loss. We have the option of Christensen, who Xavi has already said and already tried in, in the midfield. We have to look at our options in the summer. Then as on Thiago Mota, being in the potential opposite, I haven't seen uh, any Bologna games because with so many games and trips, I don't have time to see any other team uh, you know, that play. But it's true that Thiago Mota is uh, doing a good job. And of course, I haven't spoken to Thiago Mota in many years. 
of course, they were former teammates at Barcelona. And finally, he was he concluded off by saying that arguments to convince the next coach for Barcelona is great. They have the ability to react and move forward. Barcelona is current champions, although it may not seem like that. They have made competitive team and they have produced quality young players. So very much similar interview to the one he gave to La Vanguardia a few days ago. And the only real insight that we got was on the uh, coaches that he's looking at. Of course, Lamanya Mal, his longer contract as well, and the relationship that he has there with Jorge Mendes. Again, Deco, there's already a lot of doubts about him. He's only been in the job for about eight months in total. Again, just taking over uh, Mateo Eliman and Jordi Quay's work altogether. He has a big job to you know prove us Barcelona fans what he's made of. Again, he's missed out on a few talents recently like Mascardo, Echeverri, Bacheval. But we'll wait and see what he does in the summer and who he appoints alongside Laporta as a new manager. But again, his reputation is definitely on the line. And he's already been in the job eight months. You know, Chavi talks about pressure and all this stuff. It also goes on to the sporting director as well. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, make sure to leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing, obviously, of course, is your thoughts on Barcelona summer transfer targets. Looking at a left back, left winger, and of course, in the midfield, where your thoughts on Barcelona pursuing Alex Garcia. Your thoughts on Matoma being an option at left wing. And who would you go for at left back, Alex Valle or Sergi Cardona? Second, your thoughts on those bloody renewals for basically the entire defense plus Mark Burnell in the midfield what would you do in that uh, defense as well who would you sell if a sale is needed and find your thoughts on the new head coach who you think it will be and who do you want it to be and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and i will see you guys next time on the channel take care and force a barca <laughs>